Well, you can see still some police officers here because there are still protesters outside the front of uh, the palaces, uh, the Palace of Westminster uh, as well. Uh, they've been good enough to speak to us uh, the last hour or so, so we'll see if they can speak to us again. Excuse me, you're, you're live on GB News. Uh, Hello, Mark. Can you tell us your name? Yeah, my name is Paul Stevens. I'm a retired police detective and I'm here with Extinction Rebellion because we cannot afford this anymore. Something has to be done and we need to give power back to the people with citizens' assemblies. You're a retired police detective. Many of your former colleagues might be saying, you know, why on earth are you here? Look at all the officers around here that are tied up with trying to police you at a time when we've got such violence in London and beyond. We're not responsible for the police response. Often there are too many officers deployed for Extinction Rebellion. And on the 10th of September, we're going to occupy Hyde Park with no disruption whatsoever. It's going to need a very, very low police profile for that. Right, OK, well, that's Hyde Park. This is clearly uh, Parliament, the mother of Parliament. You're here, uh, 50 protesters. It's going to require a significant police response. You know that, given that uh, you're a former uh, Met detective uh, yourself in the past. Um, Clearly, in that response for two hours, and actually still here, they're not policing the streets. Well, there's, uh, the police that are here are usually on standby for this kind of thing, so um, it's not as if we're taking huge numbers away. There aren't, there's two vans here now, two carriers. It's, it's, it's not a big thing for the police to handle. As we continue to speak to you, uh, Paul, we're just going to get the uh, Jim, our cameraman, just to get some other shots around here, as I say. Nothing against you, but uh, the, the shots are, are a bit more interesting than us. Um, in, in terms of actually breaching Parliament itself, obviously some of your protester colleagues have gone inside, glued themselves to the Speaker's chair. Was that necessary? They didn't glue themselves to the Speaker's chair. It's my understanding that they held hands and glued their hands to each other. So they're in a ring around the Speaker's chair, causing no damage to the Speaker's chair. That's my understanding. Um, one of your colleagues, we can show that shot, hopefully, Jim, just through the railings there, actually has put a banner up. It's now been taken down. It was on the scaffolding there. You'll probably be able to see the scaffolding at the other end. Uh, clearly, there will be some questions to be asked as well about the security around here well, yeah. in terms of how people were able to get up on scaffolding and uh, to break off and get into the chamber. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, that's partly my job because I do protest liaisons, so I make sure the police know that we're peaceful protesters, we're not terrorists, and that they get that message at the right time. So, um, you know, that's, that's quite an important thing. But clearly, you know, it is a little bit te of testing the security, and maybe look, there will be learning from this, and that's a, that's a positive thing. Listen, everyone here I know is passionate. You really, really are concerned about uh, the planet and where we might be headed. But, you know, you said you're not terrorists. There will be many people who are actually watching this who think that that's exactly what you are, eco-terrorists, that you're causing such disruption and potential security threats here in very sensitive locations like Parliament. The two candidates for the Tory party are saying nothing about the climate emergency. They're actually talking about authorising new oil and gas, which is going in the wrong direction. But well, what know? about the cost of and living emergency? People that Which can't is afford... linked to oil and gas. It's all part of the same thing. Isn't it linked and to this, the subsidies that they're, they're doing paying as well right for, for their eco-power no, it's, supply? It's linked to the global suppliers of oil and gas that are keeping their prices high. We don't have any control over that. The government do. They can cap that. They can cap the, the oil suppliers. Not the energy companies, but the oil suppliers. But they're not touching them. That's a political decision. So we need to put the, those decisions back in the hands of the public give them proper information, not through the press, because they'll just get left or right, but proper information that's peer-reviewed and let them make a decision. That's what this is about. Well, here they're not getting left or, or right. They're getting it from you live. You can say what you want clearly, as long as you don't swear. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you know, you're live on television. We're yeah. not censoring or cutting uh, anything out from what you're saying. Uh, we know that... Colleagues of yours uh, from Interlake Britain caused a lot of disruption 
uh, last year, earlier this year. Is that where we're headed now with Extinction Rebellion? Are, are you going to launch more of these protests in the weeks and months ahead? Well, X XR and Extinction Rebellion are not the same movement. They're, they're separate, but, but there are some people who have moved from one to the other. I agree. Um, but th the kind of disruption we're looking at, and we're talking about the climate crisis is right here. We had a heat wave that caused over a thousand excess deaths. That hasn't been put in the press. We, it crashed the IT system at Guy's Hospital, which put patients at risk for days. That hasn't gone out in the press. So these things have to be told. The public are facing these risks right now, and this government are not dealing with it. So we have to give the power back to the people to make decisions. So the, the answer to my question is what? You're going to have many more of these direct action disruptive tactics that are going to cause people unfortunately I'm sure you would say disruption well it depends on the press if the press give, a, give us coverage without doing things like this then we wouldn't have to do that no but that is not the case so we have to do things like this to raise the profile and try and get people to come along to Hyde Park on the 10th 11th and 12th of September it's only in a week's time it's purely education arts theatre to learn about sustainable living and how you make decisions with citizens assemblies um, which will be a better form of democracy than we have behind us. What would you say though to you know, viewers and listeners on this channel and others who are watching and listening uh, and who think that you know you're just not living in the real world the kind of you know utopian society that you'd love to achieve is just not achievable in the real world? It has to be achievable because otherwise we won't have a livable planet. The question is how quickly are we going to do it? Are we going to delay the transition from fossil fuels because we want to make more money or the one percent want to make more money or are we going to do it as quickly and as safely as we can and that's what we're pushing for to do it as quickly as we can okay, not, well, and not cutting the, the oil taps off straight away nobody says that it's about new oil and gas it's going in the wrong direction well listen uh, many people might disagree with you lots of people will probably agree with you but thank you very much thank you for well. talking for to us really thank appreciate you. that um, so i mean you heard it there from uh, protesters here that have been telling me that there will be more in the way of direct action. They believe that they're justified in doing that. But in doing that, of course, it does cause disruption. It does tie up police officers who, at the moment, would clearly rather be on the streets. And, and one of the protesters saying if the media would cover us, they wouldn't need these protests. Well, let's see if that's true or not. But we're certainly covering them today, Patrick.